is one of those days the Lord has made. We should rejoice and be glad in it, right? We ought to rejoice and be glad in this day. Amen. Amen. Nehemiah says no reason for us to, to, to grieve, to grieve. He says the joy of the Lord uh, is our strength. Amen. How many of us remember that? That the joy of the Lord is our strength. Joy of the Lord is our strength. Amen. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Amen. Amen. Good to see all of you on this Sunday morning. Amen. In the Lord's house, in his presence. Amen. God is gracious and kind to us. Amen. To allow us to have an audience with him. Isn't that right? God don't have to do that. He's holy. He's righteous. Amen. But he allow us, he allow you and I to come, his people and bow down before him and to serve him and to worship him. And so I would hope that you would just leave all the cares of the world. I uh, hope you left it at the house. Uh, amen. At least on Bandera Road, right? Amen. I left all my cares out on Bandera Road. Amen. Because I'm in here to worship God. Amen. To, to, to lift up his name. And he is worthy today of all our praise. He is worthy today of all our praise. Amen. We're going to get ready and start to get moving here and lift up our voices. I see we have some of our praise team here with us on today. And so and without any further ado, let them come on up here and bless us. And amen. Sing us happy today. Amen. Good morning to our viewing audience. Good morning to our viewing audience. Morning. Good morning. Weeping may endure for a night.
St. John, and to our viewing audience, good morning and welcome. Our scripture this morning is found in Romans. Let us stand for the reading of God's word. Romans chapter 12, beginning at verse 9 through 18. That's Romans chapter 12 beginning at verse 9 through 18. So good to hear the pages turning. Reading from the NIV, and the word of the Lord reads, Love must be sincere. Hate what is evil. Cling to what is good. Be devoted to one another in brotherly love. Honor one another above yourselves. Never be lacking in zeal, but keep your spiritual fervor serving the Lord. Be joyful in hope, patient in affliction, faithful in prayer. Share with God's people who are in need, practice hospitality. Bless those who persecute you. Bless and do not curse. Rejoice with those who rejoice and mourn with those who mourn. Live in harmony with one another. Do not be proud but be willing to associate with people of low position. Do not be conceited. Do not repay anyone evil for evil. Be careful to do what is right in the eyes of everybody. If it is possible, as far as it depends on you, Live in peace with everyone. Amen. That's Romans chapter 12, verses 9 through 18. Let us go before the Lord in prayer. And Father, we, your children, have come here in this sanctuary to praise and worship you because you are worthy of it. And we come this morning to give you thanks. 
Thanking you, Father, for waking us up to see another beautiful day which you've made. Thank you that you clothe us in our right minds. Thank you, Father, for, for food on our tables, clothes to wear, a roof over our head. We know that every good and perfect gift is from you. So we just thank you, Father, for being so good to us. And Father, this morning we come praying for this worship service that it will be pleasing before you. So we want to begin lifting up our pastor to you. We pray for him as he stands and give us your word. We pray that you will keep his mind. We pray that you will keep his heart. We pray that you would keep his health. We pray for his family. We ask that you would bless his home. Bless his going out and coming in. Pray this morning, oh Lord, that when he gives out your word, that you would open the hearts of the hearers. May we, your children, hear. we know that you are our God and that you love us. Thank you for the musicians. We pray, oh God, that we continue to play pleasing before you today. Now, Lord, remember those who are in, 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 in government, from our president down to our mayor. Well, Lord, now may we continue in our worship. We pray that you will be pleased and glorified today. In Jesus' name, amen. Oh, hallelujah. Give God some praise. Give God some praise in the house. I hope you're praising him at home. Amen. He's worthy today of all of our praise. Amen. Amen. Thank God for reminding us. Look at here. It's my testimony. I'm not going to take it back. Amen. That is that weeping may endure in the night, <laughs> huh? but, but joy comes in the morning. Amen. Somebody, somebody might be just about to go into something. Amen. Amen. It's a good witness today to share with them. Amen. Those of us that already been in and back out, amen. We can say amen with a boldness on this Sunday morning. You might have to cry sometime. Amen. But with God on your side, weeping. Amen. Amen. Might be a nighttime thing, but joy comes in the morning. Amen. In the morning time. Amen. Amen. That that that's my that's my witness. That I'm not taking that back. Amen. Our God is. He is certainly a God who enables. He's an enabler, right? And so we praise him for that on the day. Thank you so much, uh, Reverend Sneed, for guiding us doing our pulpit devotion. Thank you so much. Amen. Amen. Before we go higher in the Lord, let me just mention here an announcement. On yesterday, uh, we were passing out uh, backpacks and school supplies. Amen. To our members who went online and you filled out uh, the application for school supplies and backpacks. Amen. You were to pick them up on yesterday. Amen. But because I'm Christian, because I'm a Christian, amen, I have given you an extension. Amen. Allow you to pick it up today from 4 o'clock to 6 o'clock. You can pick it up 
today. Amen. Now you want to do that. You don't want to try Monday. You don't want to try Monday. I'll wake, wake them up at the house and say, the pastor said, if you don't have that stuff, you don't want to try Monday. Amen. You want to get it today between four to six. Amen. Would y'all help us with that? Amen. It's free. You don't have to go to Walmart. You don't have to come out of your wallet. Amen. We did that for you. Amen. All you got to do is pick it up. Amen. So do that today between four and six. Amen. We hate to just give it away to somebody. That's what I normally do. Uh, we give you the Sunday. After Sunday, we give it away. And so I'm trying to be Christian today. <laughs> For I love the brothers. How you know you've been saved? For I love the brethren. <laughs> Amen. Thank you. Thank you, St. John, for supporting the work that we do here. And God's been blessing us to be a blessing. And so we want to continue to do that. And so we can't do it without your blessing. So thank you so much for how you've been blessing the church uh, during this season. And we just thank God for how God's been blessing us. God's been blessing us, St. John. Amen. He is, he really been kind to us. And so we ought to praise him and serve him. Amen. Serve him like you're crazy about him. Isn't that right? Amen. Amen. All right. All right. We're going to go higher. We're going to go higher in the Lord. And so, amen. We're going to have our music minister to come back and bless us. And then we'll come back and share the word from the Lord. He leads me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. When he becomes, when we become a believer, your spirit becomes right.
want your breakthrough coming through. You know, deliver me from this heartache, Lord. To say this is your end. Somebody ought to say something. <laughs> I say somebody ought to say something. There ought to be a hallelujah in here. There ought to be a thank you Jesus at the house. Somebody ought to want to bless his name. Somebody ought to want to give him the glory. Yeah. Hallelujah. 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 Woo! Ah, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Isn't he all right? Isn't God all right? We serve a mighty good God. I say we serve a mighty good God. Hallelujah. And he's worthy today of all our praise. Of all our praise. He's worthy today of all our praise. Woo! My, my, my. My, my, my. Woo! I feel like we in Nellyville. <laughs> We're in Nellyville. It's, it's getting hot in here. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Woo! Thank you so much to our music ministry. Singing our God. Singing him down to us this morning where we could ourselves in his presence at his altar there's something about being in his midst there's something about hanging around God and knowing he's there hallelujah I want to do a drive-by we've been studying 
1 Corinthians chapter 15, and I want to come back. I want to go back there. I was here a few Wednesdays ago. I want to call our attention. I want to shine my sermonic spotlight on verse 9 and 10 in 1 Corinthians chapter 15. And look at that again with you. First Corinthians chapter 15, New Testament writings. Beginning at verse number nine, where Brother Paul says, For I am the least of the apostles, and I do not even deserve to be called an apostle, because I persecuted the church of God. But by the grace of God, I am what I am. And his grace to me was not without effect or it was not in vain. No, I worked harder than all of them. Yet not I, but the grace of God that was with me. Amen, amen. God, we love you, we praise you, we thank you, God, for another day. We give you praise and glory and, and honor, God, it all belongs to you. We thank you, God, for allowing us to worship you on this Sunday morning, and you declared in your word that they that worship you must do it in spirit and in truth. And so we pray, God, that you would forgive us on this Sunday morning, you would cleanse us, make us right today to worship you in spirit and in truth. We thank you, God, for how you have blessed us in our music and our singing and in the reading of your word this morning and in our prayer time. We thank you for it. We pray, God, that you allow us to worship you in this preaching hour. We pray, God, you would fill the preacher as well as the hearers of your word with your spirit and your word. And let your word go forward on this Sunday morning with clarity, with simplicity, and yet with power. For it's in Jesus' name we pray and we do thank you and the church say, Amen, Amen. <clears throat> Hallelujah. I am what I am by the grace of God. Amen. I want us to look at this. I think that Paul is saying to you, I, you and I on this Sunday morning that, that God makes the difference. God makes the difference. That's what I believe one of the messages, one of the takeaways that you and I can take from 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 9 and 10. I feel Paul saying to us, God makes the difference. It's a song that we sing here sometime uh, by the Mississippi Mass Choir, having you there, having God there in our ups and our downs and our sad times and our happy times, having God there, having him with you makes the difference. Does anybody here know that anybody at the house know that, that God makes the difference? God makes the difference. He makes the difference in our lives every day. Uh, this is something that Gideon had to learn. Uh, God approached Gideon one day in Judges chapter 6, and God said of him that he was a mighty warrior said he was a mighty warrior, and God said to him that you will save Israel from the Midianites. But, 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 but Gideon's response to God tells me he didn't know what it meant to have God with him. He didn't quite understand that, that God makes the difference. His response to God was, he said, so I, I am, I'm going to be the one you use to save Israel, huh? Then he tells God, my clan is the weakest. 
And, and you know, my, my clan, he says, is the weakest in Manessa. That, 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 that if you had to pick a clan to, 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 to fight the Midianites and, and save Israel, you, you surely wouldn't be picking my clan. And, and then he, he, he keep on uh, 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 reducing the equation, right, to its lowest term. <laughs> he, he said, not only, not only he say, is the, my clan weak, he said, but I am the least in my family. He said, I'm the, my, my clan is leap, you know, is weak. The group that, I, that, that, I'm, that I'm from, that I belong to, they weak. And, and then I'm the least in the weak clan <laughs> that's in my family. And you telling me that I'm going to lead Israel to victory over the oppressive Amidianites. And, and he didn't quite understand that, that, that God makes the difference. He didn't quite, he, didn't, he, he would learn that, but he didn't get that. Unlike a young David understood that, that God makes the difference. Yeah, a young, a young David knew that, that God makes the difference. And so when he was faced, amen, with a giant in his way, uh, 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 with nobody else, uh, uh, wanted to deal with the giant that was in their way because a young David, a young David understood that, that the God of Abraham, uh, Isaac, and Jacob is God who make the difference. And even though that giant, yes, he is taller than me. He is, he is stronger than me. Yes, look like they've been beating on everybody. But, but, but David understood that it wouldn't be by his strength. He understood it was the strength of his God. And so he looked in his own portfolio and said, now look, God has helped me overcome a lion, and, and God has helped me, what, overcome a bear. Surely God still, what, he has enabling power. You know, if God is with me, and if God is willing, what? This giant is coming down. I, I wish I had somebody here today that can just go back down memory lane. You don't have to be long going down there, but, but, but you can just look back over your shoulder at a few times in your life where you know good and well that God, what? Made the difference. God, God made the difference. If it had not, amen, if it had not been, what, for God who was on our side. Isn't that how it goes? If it had not been for the Lord, what, where would we be? God, look, he makes the difference, amen. We ought to be howling at your boy and shouting up in here because, because that is the very truth, that, that God makes the difference. Amen, amen. When, when, if God is in the middle of that thing, if God is with you, God makes the difference. Don't, don't you worry about trying to shoulder all of the load by yourself. Amen. Don't, don't, don't you worry about, about the way things are adding up in the world. Don't worry about what the critics are saying. You just have to know who it is, what, that is with you. And if God is on your side, <clears throat> I wish I had somebody up in here. If God is on your side, you have all the help what you need. Amen, 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 amen. Jehoshaphat know <clears throat> when God is with you, you ain't even got to fight. Jehoshaphat say, Jehoshaphat say, look, look, the battle is not even ours. <laughs> Hallelujah. I feel like howling up in here today. Say, so you don't even have to fight when, 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 when you know God is with you. God, God is a difference maker. When, 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 look at here, when you know God makes the difference, what I see Paul saying in this text, Paul saying, it shouldn't have never happened. <laughs> Paul, in a sense, he's saying what happened to him, <laughs> Paul is saying what happened to me, he is really saying it shouldn't have never happened. 
<laughs> Can anybody walk with Brother Paul and see what Paul's saying? Pa pa Paul, Paul's saying, Pastor Price, don't, when you stand up on Sunday morning, please tell them that, 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 that what happened to me, what, what, what God did for me, Paul is saying it shouldn't have never happened. And, and, and it ought to be about one or two of y'all up in here today, amen, that no good and well, look, look, it shouldn't have never happened, look, look what happened to you. What happened to you? Let me help some of y'all here. Paul, Paul says, he says right here in verse 9, he says, For I am the least of the apostles. He said, I'm, I'm the, now the when he, by him saying that, he's saying it shouldn't have never happened. <clears throat> he said, I'm, the, I'm an apostle, he says, of Christ. He said, but, but, but I'm the least of all of them. Uh, in other words, it's not, it's not somebody outside of Paul who's putting him down. When, when Paul looks at Christ, when he stands in the presence of God, uh, 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 when he looked at how awesome God is and how holy God is, and, and, and when he looked at himself, uh, uh, Paul, look, he makes himself a, a basement. I mean, he, he dishonors what? himself. And I know some of y'all uncomfortable with that because y'all made your ball a shot call us and y'all just want to be on the on the elevation. But 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 every now and then you got to look and remember your little your look your humble beginnings. You got to remember uh, 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 that what what God what God has what what He has done for you, right? And you got to be able to say without a doubt, Pastor Price, look at here. What happened to me should have never happened because I'm the least of the folk in my family. I'm look look I'm I'm the least of those that came out of my neighborhood. Look look my whole family ain't been do about nothing but God. Look. He, look, God, look, have blessed me, and God has brought me, what? Having God in my life, what? Have made the difference. So you can't have no church until you can first abase yourself. You, you, you gotta, you look, that's why you gotta check all of your paperwork at the church doors that don't bring your PhD up in here. Don't, don't, don't bring your, your, your graduate degree and your undergraduate, you know. Don't bring your little position on the job up in here. When you come up in the church, uh, it's with the understanding what? It never should have happened. Had it not been for the Lord. He, 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 say, he says, for I am, I am what I am. He says, I'm, I'm the least of all of the apostles. He's talking about the goodwill of God. Do you know anything about the goodwill of God? That, 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 that God, look, he saved you. God brought you in the family, not, not because you woke up one day and said, I need to get it together. You don't wake up like that. God saves us. God God brings us into the tent, you know, uh, out of his own goodwill. And, 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 and Paul, as he think about who he is in the kingdom of God and his standing in the church and how God has allowed him to be a church planter, how God has allowed Paul to, to, to what? To birth this church at Corinth. And, and they have the audacity at the church at, at Corinth to think they are more than who they are. They, they have the audacity to look down their nose at Paul. And Paul just pumping the brakes for a moment right here to let them know that for I am I'm not worthy to be an apostle in a sense he said if y'all had any sense you would know you ain't worthy of being up in this church sometimes some of us show up to church and walk around amen with our angel clothes on amen we didn't forgot that at one time we wasn't that sweet we didn't smell like that so you, you didn't took the purple out of your hair now. You didn't, you know, you didn't, come on, help me somebody up in here. You, you know, you didn't let your skirt down now. You didn't button up your blouse now. You, you gone conservative now since Jesus. 
But every now and then you ought to have a, a late mini Ripperton moment. You ought to go back down memory lane. And when you go back down memory lane, you know what? It should have never happened. Say, I'm the least. I'm the I'm the least. I'm, he said, I'm the least of, 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 of all the apostles. And then in Ephesians, he says, I'm the least of all the saints. <laughs> Paul, Paul, Paul said, I don't want to ever come into church and, 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 think, and think I earn anything. <laughs> Paul, Paul says, I don't ever, ever want to think I'm better than anybody at church or on my job. Some of us that God has blessed you and, and you have, you're in a position of authority now and, 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 and you're doing well. Don't ever think you better than the people that work for you. Amen. Folks that are under you. Amen. You got to remember that, that, that you at one time you were there and, and God, look, God situated you. God put people in your path that were good to you, that, that made it happen for you. And so you got to always feel like I am the least. So don't get up and give me your seat. I ought to get up and give you mine. Talk to me if you can. Uh, he, he's saying, he's saying, he's saying it should have never, it should have never happened. Ha, 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 ha. He actually gives a reason uh, why it should have never happened. And, 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 and you don't want to forget your reason uh, for why you shouldn't be saved and why God shouldn't be blessing you. Uh, uh, Paul says it should have never happened, he said, Pastor Price, because he said, I persecuted the church. I, I shouldn't, he said, Paul said, I shouldn't be rolling like this. I, I shouldn't be, there's no way I should have been the one that, 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 that's, that's the author of most of the New Testament writings. There's it, no way that I should be, you know, have such status in the church. Uh, he, he boasts uh, 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 to the church about, about having more gifts, he says, than anybody. He says, I speak more tongues than anybody. Uh, uh, and so he boasts about uh, uh, how God is using him and how God has endowed him. But in the context of him not forgetting that he don't deserve God's goodwill. Uh, I wish I'm talking to somebody here today who, who think you just earned everything. He said, I don't deserve uh, the goodwill of God. His reason is what? I persecuted the church. I hated the church. You got to go and read Acts chapter 9. You see what he, Paul's talking about. Talks about how he had a letter uh, to go to Damascus to put Christians in jail, uh, to drag off Christians and put them. He hated the church. He, he couldn't stand the church of Christ. And something happened to him that day on that road. Uh, uh, while he was going to Damascus, he rumped into Jesus. And his life never been the same. I mean, Paul, Paul said, I don't deserve the goodwill. I don't deserve the kindness of God. Amen. Can anybody here, anybody watching, remember, amen, your reason uh, for why you don't deserve uh, the goodness of God? Why, why, why you don't deserve God's blessings? Uh, maybe there are some failures uh, in your life that's popping up this morning, reminding you uh, why you don't deserve uh, God's goodwill. Maybe there are some sins in our lives that are popping up this morning, reminding us that we don't deserve the goodwill of God. Maybe you don't deserve the goodwill of God because of the family you come from. But on this Sunday morning, you're smelling like a rose, amen. Amen, you're living life like it's golden, golden. And it's not because, amen, anything you have done. It never should have happened. But by his grace. Uh, uh, the text, you know, you think about folk who, who remember it never should have happened. Uh, when, he, when Jesus healed those 10 lepers and he told those 10 lepers to go and show themselves to their priests. And, and the Bible said why the 10 lepers was, was on their way uh, to show themselves to the priests. The Bible said that, that, that they recognized that they were healed 
And, and one, of the, one of the ten had enough smarts about himself. He, he remembers clearly this never should have happened. Uh, he, he, you know, when you remember it never should have happened, you got to remember who it was that made it happen. And, 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 and so one of, the, one of the ten decided, no, y'all go on and, and show yourself to the priest. But I'm about to do about face. I'm, I'm about to turn around and, and go back and, 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 and thank that man named Jesus. That, that it was Jesus Christ that, that made me whole. And, and, and so sometimes what? We got to remember why we don't deserve his goodwill, his love and his kindness. Uh, uh, you got to remember it's God that, that, that woke you up this morning. Uh, in spite of ourselves, he gave us another chance to come in here and worship him. And you got to remember that, that it's the goodwill of God is what Paul is saying. It's what's working in our lives. Then in this text, we see God, he wipes out anything and everything wrong with us to use us. Huh? He, he, he wipes out anything and everything wrong with us just to use us. Huh? Huh? Look, 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 at, look at it here. He, he says... He says, he says right here, he said, but by the grace of God, I am what I am, huh? But, but, but I persecute, I don't deserve it because I persecuted the church. And then he put that but there. Yes. Yes. I, I, I persecuted the church, but, huh? huh? Say, say, I walked out, I walked out on God, but. I refuse to serve him, but, look, but I, I, I lied and I cheated, but. But, by the grace of God, I am what I am. Ain't that some shouting stuff right here? That, he, that how, how God, that, that but wipes out everything that preceded it. Everything he said before but, just got wiped out. And, and in other words, Paul is saying, I'm a chosen vessel of God. See, he's saying a lot in that verse, more than I can probably unpack this Sunday morning when, when, he, when he says to us, but by the grace of God. Uh, he, he's, really, he's really shifting. He says first, I, I persecuted the, the church, and so I don't deserve to be where I am this Sunday morning. I don't deserve to be seated where I am. I don't deserve the blessings and the kindness and, and the goodness that God, what, has showered on me. We as a church don't, don't deserve God's goodness, right, because of our own, what, our own sinfulness. But... Not, not by human strength, not, not, not because of his education, and Paul had a lot of that. Huh? Not, not, not because of anything that, that, that in himself, Paul is about to say, I am what I am, whether you like me or not, I am what I am, he said, by the grace. I hope Paul helping somebody dealing with depression or, or, or dealing with not loving yourself and struggling with who you are because of what the world is saying or not saying about you. You got to look at your Bible and see how God see you. And you got to understand God love you just the way you are. You got to look at all your haters and says, but by the grace of God. Paul saying, I'm chosen. I'm chosen, and so because I'm chosen, not, not because of anything I have done, Paul is saying, saying that God, look, he, look, God has justified me. <clears throat> See, when you're justified, hey amen, that's a legal term. You know, you know if, some, if you ain't never been in no trouble, right, you, you, can, you can drive around, and when the police pull up behind you or next to you at the light, you don't go through no changes because you don't have no record. But if you ever had a record, huh, if they had your paperwork and, 
and, and, and, and you know you've been in the system uh, uh, or you're on probation, haven't been fully pardoned yet, uh, and the police pull up next to you or behind you, huh? you don't even want to look at the police. Anybody ever been there? You don't want to look at the police. You let, when the light change, you, you pull off so slow. <laughs> Because you ain't been fully pardoned yet. But, but, but when God, look, when God pardoned us, when God pardoned us, when he saved us, when he atoned for us on Calvary, see, God made it right for you and I. We are justified. We are, we are right with God. And so my past can't hurt me. I can come in church every Sunday, what? And lift, lift my hands up and give God praise. And no matter how much you remember about my past, uh, it don't mess with my praise. Because what? But by God's grace, what? He wiped out anything and everything that was ever wrong with us he wiped it out and not because what you were the best person or we the best church but what because of god's grace the favor of god on our lives oh i wish you could hit me here tonight this morning i wish y'all feeling what i'm saying up in this place that 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 look at here like god makes the difference you can praise God unapologetically when you come in church, even though, even though you're, look, you was jacked up before Jesus, but now you can come in, look, you can come in with all them children you had out of wedlock. They in Sunday school. They singing church songs. I wish I had some help up in here. Look at here, you can pull up in your little hoop there now. You lost everything. You know, you, were, you was bankrupt. You didn't lost the house, the car. Look, look, when you, you had a great life at one time, but you lost it all, but not your senses. You can pull up in your little hoop there on the church ground with praise, amen, on your heart and on your lips because but by God's grace. Ha, 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 ha. You had a Job moment, you know. Naked I came into the world, and naked I'm going to leave. What? The Lord give it, and the Lord what? Take it away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. You're able to say, he gave it to me the first time. What? He'll let me have it again. He wipes it all out. So, so it's but by his grace. His grace, y'all. He, he, he says, he says, but by the grace of God, I am what I am. So you, you might not like it. He said, but that's, that's just the way it is. I'm looking here. I'm, I'm, I'm all right with me uh, because God is all right with me. Uh, then he says, I'm going to get out of your way. He said, look, he said, price and price, uh, make sure you tell him that, that, that 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 the grace of God is working in your life. See, when God makes a difference, when God makes a difference in our lives, not only He wiped everything out, right? Uh, not, not not only you know you know it should have never happened, uh, but His grace is working in your life. Huh, huh, that's what Paul, 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 here it is right here. I'm, I'm out of your way. He says, he says, but by the grace of God, I am what I am. He says, and his grace to me. Oh, I like that. His grace to me, he makes it personal. He said, it was not without an effect. Huh, uh, or it was not a grace in vain. In other words, he's saying what God did for me, he says, it's working in my life. Uh, 
uh, uh, he, he's saying it's not, it's not something that, 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 I, that, I, that I'm so shy, I'm so ashamed. Uh, he said that I've hid uh, uh, what God is doing in my life. Uh, uh, Sometimes we are so shy uh, 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 about, about our past that, that we don't want to say nothing about our story and, and, and where God brought us from. Uh, but, 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 but Paul uh, uh, in, in the text is telling uh, the church at Corinth, y'all got to understand that 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 God's grace uh, uh, will not be wasted, but His grace is working. He says in my life uh, that 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 the gifts that that God has given me, uh, He has given me those gifts. He says for the good of the church, uh, 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 for the building up of the saints, and 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 God has gifted some of you. God has given you a, a spiritual gift and, and it's not for you uh, it's not for you to look down on what God has graced you with and and and, and you have hid that thing or buried that thing so busy looking at somebody else's giftedness and what somebody else is doing and you might not be able to sing uh, uh, like tea uh, uh, but but don't worry about that uh, you got to understand uh, that whatever God God what, has graced you to have. Uh, you got to make sure what, that you work that thing. That, that what, God is, look, what God has placed in your control, uh, that you got to work that thing. You got to make sure what, that I'm operating uh, in the giftedness of God. Uh, and he said, I work harder, Pastor Price, uh, than all the other uh, apostles. Uh, I love that. Uh, he said, I don't work to keep up with them. Uh, I don't work to just be even with them uh, but I appreciate uh, the grace of God uh, I appreciate uh, Jesus dying uh, on Calvary for me uh, I have such great appreciation uh, for Jesus death uh, on Calvary uh, he said until I work harder uh, I work harder uh, than all the other uh, apostles uh, and that's why when you come to church uh, and think about uh, the goodness of Jesus and what God has brought you from and what God has brought you through you don't want an usher to come sit you down and come pull on you you want the usher to give me some space give me some runway for my praise I got to thank God because God been gracious to me that God been good to me if it had not been for the Lord who was on my side, the Lord, he made the difference. Is there anybody up in here that know what I'm talking about? When I look back over my shoulders and look at our ancestors who came through the rites of passage, who came through slavery, who came through, yeah, Jim Crow uh, and Reconstruction uh, to having a black president uh, in the White House uh, a black woman uh, running for vice president uh, all I'm telling you uh, is that God uh, he makes the difference uh, having him there uh, makes the difference uh, is there anybody up in here uh, that loves the Lord uh, is there anybody up in here uh, that know Jesus if you know him, if you love the Lord, say yeah, say yeah, say yeah, 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 say yeah. Hallelujah. He makes the difference. I work harder than all of you. He said, but wait a minute, not me. The grace of God hallelujah hallelujah ain't he all right I thank him for his grace this morning I thank him for his grace hallelujah Woo! yes sir He's worthy of all our praise this Sunday morning. 
You got to magnify the Lord. We worried about the post office. We better get God in this thing. You got to get God in it. God makes the difference. He makes the difference. Before there was a pandemic, there was an omnipresence. At the end of the pandemic, it's still going to be an omnipresence of God. That means he's everywhere. He's everywhere at the same time. So you don't have to wait on God. He's waiting on us. He's waiting on us to recognize the difference it makes when you know in him. And that's what I want to offer to somebody here today listening to me on this Sunday morning. I, I really, I hope that you've heard enough today to understand if I don't know Jesus, if I don't have God in my life, if God is not the center of my life, my joy, then I don't have what I need. I don't have what I need to function in this world. And I want you to know you can have him. You don't have to worry about your last night blunders, your last week blunders, your vices. Don't let none of that stop you. Paul recognizes all of us have something that make us undeserving. But, but, but by God's grace, Paul says, he can get past what's wrong with us and make us all over again. And so if you're with us today, you don't know Christ as your personal savior, and you're with us today, and you want him today, you only have to believe in your heart that Jesus Christ is Lord. You just got to believe he lived, he died, he rose from his grave on that third day. And that Jesus is seated at the right hand of God. All power, heaven and earth is in his hand. One day he's coming back again to receive his church unto himself. And I want you to be in that number. At home we were saying when the saints go marching in. So I want you to be in that number when the saints go marching in. And you can be in that number by just having faith in Jesus Christ. Receiving what God has already made available unto you and to me. Maybe you're with us today, you're a person of faith, you've already accepted Christ. Maybe you're watching us, you already accepted Christ as your personal Savior. And you're unchurched, in between church, and you're listening to us today. You're here in San Antonio. San Antonio is home for you. Amen. We'd love to have you come and be a part of our church family. You come by letter, by statement, by Christian experience. You're just unchurched, in between church. You need a church home. You need, you, you need a covering in this pandemic. You don't want to just be solo right now. You want to you wanna be in the house of the Lord. And you're you, you hearing me today. You're watching today. Reach out to us. Call us. Email us. And say, Brother Price, I, I sense God is leading me your way. And our, our administrators will take it from there. We're excited about you coming. I know you're coming. I'm excited about it already. The Bible declares that heaven rejoices when one person is saved. And so I'm already excited about what God is doing right now in this hour. Won't you come? Won't you come? God, I thank you for your word today. I thank you, God, for your spirit today. God, I pray that something was said today that has drawn us so close to you. And that man, that woman, uh, that young adult, that millennial who don't know you today as their personal Savior, God, would come to know you. Come to know you as Lord and King. We be careful to give you praise and give you glory. For it's in Jesus' name we pray. We do thank you and the church say amen. All right, all right. We're almost there. We're almost out. Amen. We're going to lift our offering before you go. Give us a chance to get situated with that. Let me just thank you so much, man. It's good to see all of you in church. Man, give yourselves a hand. It's so good to see all of you. Give our officers a chance to get the offering trays. We'll lift our offering uh, as you're going out of the doors. Hallelujah. Hello, I'm Pastor Paul.
Christ of St. John Baptist Church. And I want to just thank you for watching us today. I want to encourage you to be one of our subscribers. If you're not already one of our subscribers, please subscribe uh, to our Facebook page. Also, if you need more information about our church, uh, there's a link below that you can click on and learn more about St. John Baptist Church. Also, if you want to give and support the work of the Lord that we have us doing here in San Antonio, you can go to our website. Uh, we have PayPal there. We can, you can give and support the work of the Lord here in San Antonio. So glad, again, that you took the time out to, to watch us, and we hope you come back, visit with us again. Be blessed.